we are taking in our clinics. So we have to strike a balance between the cost and being cautious. So Dr. Talwar, please. Thank you, Manisha. In these last two hours, I have actually got scared. I used to think that I'm cautious, but it seems to me I'm going to, be, I'm going to appear like a Rambo, as I said. And that is because I think maybe we may be going overboard on a lot of these things. Mm -hmm. I'm unable to go into the slideshow. Yeah, okay. I agree, we live in a changed world. We have new norms of acceptable behavior and these will be both during the lockdown and keep it in mind, post lockdown too. But these fears, there are rational ones and some irrational ones. It's important for us to understand and differentiate what are the critical changes we need to do, which are imperative, which are important, which are not so critical, but good if we do it, and what are luxuries, which maybe only a few would be able to afford. There is definitely a continuous lurking risk of transmission of a contagion to both patients and healthcare workers. And this is regardless of the area where, work, where we are, whether it's red, orange, or the green zone, though the intensity of this risk may vary. There's a need to take precautions to prevent this infection, not only because A, you may get sealed for some time, but worse, you may end up with one positive case causing a cascading effect on the availability of health workers to run your entire facility because they all get quarantined. Because of this, we need to take precautions with regards to the procedure for registration, OPD, OPD procedures, surgical procedures, all of which you've heard from the speakers before this. But there is another thing. The patients may, because of the fear among them, limit their hospital visits themselves. And they may even look to shift their consultations to people who are nearer to them, even if they're not as satisfied. The other important thing is now when we're talking about costs, you have to talk about revenue and you have to talk about the, uh, the expenditures. So revenue can go down because of the number of patients and that can be because of this atmosphere of fear and uncertainty, but it can also be because of the reduced financial resources of the population. They don't have the money to pay for you. And lastly, and which is what seems to be coming up, a decreased capacity of the healthcare institutions to deal with patients without crowding, which is the new norm, but this we will deal with again. And the second thing is of course, the increased expenditure on this new set of operating procedures. So let's talk about this decreased capacity. I believe there is a simple solution and we've discussed it. You can increase your clinic timings and compensate for the decrease in number. And as Raja said, you can increase your efficiency. So you can increase with that by automating. You can increase that by redesigning patient flow systems. Pre-registration can be um, online. You could have prepayment uh, also online and before, uh, before the patient comes. And during the process, when he's sitting with you and he's decided you need some investigations, the, the, there can be uh, uh, wireless uh, systems for, pre for him to make the payment online also. He doesn't need to run back and forth and you don't need to crowd any area. The important thing is that there is a new normal, which is during the lockdown period, and then there will be another log normal for the post lockdown period. Now in the lockdown period, we have to have this triad so that we can figure out which patient really needs to be seen and what is not an emergency. But after that is done, we also then need to ensure, um, Dr. Mahesh already talked about that, the patients and the relatives need to have the masks and everything. Now, how much does that cost? Think about it. I was seeing the cost of MicroShield, which is the most expensive hand rub in the market. Even that is 16 rupees per patient and his for his attendant. Now, if you come to the post lockdown period, in the post lockdown period, you won't need the triage, but you still need to have the pre-registration done, you should get the declaration done, you should have the willingness to consult and he, history of contact. All those things can be done in the facility that you've created for your triage. And then the rest of the same, the, the, the procedure remains the same. And after you've done that, 
uh, I would suggest that we do use this Arogya Setu uh, app. It seems to be a good thing. And the main thing, the main essential factor, how you do it is your problem. All patients to maintain social distancing at all times. This is mandatory. And for that, you need additional space requirements or you decrease the number of patients CRR and increase the working hours. The next important thing is the additional efforts for disinfection, and there is a cost here. But where is the cost? Most of the cost is, well, you can say bacillus acid is, ex is expensive, but sodium hypochlorite is not. Right. And this can be used for all the fomites, and it's effective, whether it's number. room surfaces, etc., etc. The, the quick lamp operators. Now, the important thing is that all health workers and residents make sure to clean all, everything that they use. And one thing, avoid direct ophthalmoscopy. The only important thing is that because of this cumbersome attire, the mask, the other precautions, the goggles, your patients will not get a rapport with you. And that's why you need to spend some time. Otherwise, you may end up with more litigation later on because the patient doesn't connect with you. And that is something we must not forget. As far as the precautions are concerned, they've already been talked about. I'm not going to talk about them again. But what about the cost involved? I calculated if you consider the cost of sanitizer, cleaning, even the cleaning person additional who you take for and his salaries and all, I think the total cost is not more than 90 rupees per patient. So maybe 150 rupees to keep yourself revenue neutral, but definitely not your. Face shields are available from 75 rupees to 200 rupees. Goggles are easily available. And these are long lasting items. This is commercially available, costs 200 rupees. Very effective. I've given this to people, and this has very good transparency. This is plexiglass, so I've given it to my uh, optometrist, but the rest of them have this kind of shield um, if they want to use it, which, is, which has a little effect on vision. This is actually just a gown. This is, you don't need a hazmat suit to see your patients, but, the, but these barriers definitely are important. Non-contact tonometry, again, we will not discuss here because there's a controversy in this and I don't want to bring it up now, but the basic efforts are needed to decrease the virus load on fomites to prevent accidental picking up virus from them. Also to prevent further spread on some fomites, which comes from the people who are there coughing, sneezing, or even loud talking. And lastly, to prevent spread of aerosol from asymptomatic carriers. So now, to, in a normal OPD, normal center, the ones who have COVID positive or already have massive significant symptoms, I would say let them go to a COVID center. The rest are patients whom we can carry on with most OPDs. The only important thing is be cautious, make lifestyle changes, change into surgical scrub suits when you enter the hospital and leave them when you get out of the hospital. The important thing is don't crowd at any point of time. And that's what is the most, I mean, I can repeat that many times. Now, other than that, the basic precautions have been discussed and you continue them. Consider that everybody can contaminate you. So you don't take a chance on that. Daycare surgery is only to limit the amount of exposure, the duration of exposure. But if you follow all universal precautions and the new thing, which ophthalmologists are not used to, give a 20 minute timeout between surgery during which you call, carry out complete disinfection of the OT after each surgical case. And believe me, this is the protocol for Apollo. I'm not allowed to do a second case, even if it's an injection, unless they've cleaned the OT. Keep in mind, as far as surgery is concerned, except where you're talking of GA, where there is aerosol generation, I'm not sure how much is the risk from the aerosol which we are generating in our procedures. There is minimal possibility of virus in tears. Even in COVID positive cases, only something like three out of 52 patients turned out to be positive. The minimal load is there, and sterilization of the uh, conjunctival uh, surface with betadine will take care of whatever is residue. So you are only trying to prevent the breath from contaminating you. The surgical guidelines based on general surgery, I don't think many of them are applicable to ophthalmology, 
because as it is, I said, no proven cases, which we will do except in designated cases, uh, designated hospitals. Surgery is under local anesthesia. Only site of contamination after draping, and you are doing extensive draping, is the conjunctiva. No proven case so far of a conjunctiva to human transmission. And if you want to discuss that, I'll give you the reason for that again. I've already talked about the virus load. The betadine sterilization is effective and the aerosolization is minimal. As far as indications are concerned, I'm now to, to come to the fact that I don't believe we should say emergent. Emergent means abdi garo. So I don't believe it's emergent. I believe we should say emergent means where we believe the intervention should be within the next one or two weeks. Urgent is when we believe the intervention should be somewhere between two to six weeks. So that gives you time. And non-emergent is when you say, well, even the next six to 12 weeks is not a problem. So I'm not saying that you don't need to see those patients, but you can delay the patients. You have a dry air MD, you can delay the patient. You have to give an intravitreal. It's important you did give it within a week or 10 days. Don't try to delay that. You need to do a, a laser for an HRC um, case of uh, diabetic. Uh, do it. Don't, don't, don't delay that. But try to extend the intervals where intravitreal injections are concerned. So plan ahead. You give, so instead of giving ranibizumab, might give ILEA and say, okay, carry on for two months instead of one. Post lockdown, the same guidelines can be used for prioritization. And this is especially important for high load centers and to prevent overcrowding. It doesn't mean that the patient... Now, you know, this is Jugar at its extremes. We don't need to go there. But these are possible. But even this is not necessary. This may be for... 30 rupees, an inexpensive shield properly made in a factory is available from 75 to 200 rupees. What's the problem? If you have the luxury of an office, protect that area with glass partitions. So these are all things which are available. You want to reuse a mask. You know what I do when I go to work, I put a double mask, I come back in the car, the car is parked outside in the sun, He's going to stay there for 24 hours. I leave the mask over there. Now, uh, well, that's an un, um, the report is not yet uh, published, but the uh, report already from USA says that they found that sunlight inactivates the virus quickly. Somebody told me, well, no, that's not important. Drying does. So big deal. The drying and uh, the, the sun, if there's good enough sunlight, it will dry as well as it will, the sunlight will work. You will be able to, disp uh, to reuse most of your masks and your N95 masks. With otherwise, you will be spending a lot of money on buying N95 masks. And this is uh, what Himant uh, agreed with. If you have an N95 and you wear another mask on top of it, you can dispose the, the disposal of mask, your N95 can stay on. As far as the issue of high quality optics of various machine concerned, I just want to talk one, I want to cut this Gordian knot. I have never seen an OCT optic being contaminated because of, because, of a, because of a direct touch by either me or by my patient. So the only thing that's left is the breath which may contaminate him. That is also minimized by the use of a mask, number one. Number two, we are not going to touch these surfaces. At the end of each shift, you can use 95% isopropyl alcohol, which is safe and effective for high quality optics. In, and you, you've got a sterilized system. You don't need to put these covers and all, which are which will look cumbersome, though yes, if, the, if you find them effective and you find them very easy to do, they can be done. So I'm just giving an alternative. Once a day, you can, you can clean everything with 95% isopropyl alcohol, and that can take care of this. PPE, when I said I was talking about the hazmat suit, so I think everyone agrees that's not necessary. If you have a window air conditioner, there isn't really any issue. You can, you can have a fresh air mode or, uh, and you, if you open the window, you'll be able to get the fresh air or you can get the fresh air mode of the AC. Um, if you have an AHU, great. The last thing, the crux of everything that I've said is social distancing in the OPD and OT by staggered appointments, no walk-ins, increased dinner timings, shortened duration times, and thus examination times, 
Frequent hand sanitizer use for doctors, HCWs, and patients, and there are economical forms of those available. Frequent disinfection of all formats, which are fairly inexpensive, and PPEs all the time, not, not hazmat suits, but the PPEs as we've we, we defined. The 